What's your favorite scary movie? When you think of thrillers, Scream always comes to mind. Being one of the most iconic, jaw-dropping, spine-tingling, and somewhat funny at the same time, the horror series rewrote the rules of slasher genre, making it a cult classic that's a favorite to this day. So buckle up as we dive into what makes Scream so amazing even after all these years. First up, it reinvented horror genre. We feel the first 12 minutes of Scream 1 were sent down from the horror movie gods to enrich the genre with what an opening sequence should and shouldn't be. In what's now a classic piece of dialogue, we hear an almost comical ghostly voice on the other line ask the blonde beauty what her favorite scary movie is, a question that, unlike other films, frames Scream's conscious presence in a world all too familiar with horror. It brilliantly toys with references to genre classics. The killer asks his victims some horror movie trivia, and the viewer wants to answer. The film's teens are always discussing horror tropes, leaving the audience to connect the film with 1970s thrillers such as Halloween, Friday the 13th, and even Craven's own Nightmare on Elm Street. Scream breaks every horror movie rule that has come before it and rewrites its own rules. Its characters repeatedly make references to well-known horror movies and actors, while eventually realizing that they're in their own slasher movie. Next, it's the final girl reimagined. Then there's the concept of the final girl, that Scream changed forever. Audiences who'd seen countless slasher flicks before Scream would have identified the cheerful naive blonde in the first 12 minutes as Scream's main character and had been prepared to relate to her. But they were in for a surprise. Craven's brilliant casting of Drew Barrymore in the part signaled that we'd found our protagonist. Since Barrymore was a popular child star known for her appearance in Steven Spielberg's blockbuster 1982 film E.T., as well as a celebrity member of the Barrymores, a royal Hollywood family, many couldn't even imagine that she'd be killed off in the very first scene. It just didn't make sense to the audience back then then, and it wasn't a common thing to happen in horror flicks either. So when the audience saw her in Scream's opening scene being set up as the perfect final girl, the typical virginal, sweater-wearing blonde who survives the film, they were sure this was going to be their protagonist. But Scream, defying all expectations, slaughters Barrymore right in front of our eyes, and is very rude about it. After the first 12 minutes, it's evident that all bets are off, and everything and anything was possible. The sequel's openings unfortunately failed to top the original. In the second one, the audience sees Maureen and Phil, who were also playing the audience, get stabbed in the theater. In Scream 3, we see another blonde become victim to Ghostface, and in Scream 4, they take it up a notch with a stab and kill quite a few characters in an attempt to top the first one. But it didn't quite do the job. The most recent one, Scream 5, saw Tara Carpenter survive the killer's attack, and her survival is important for the plot to proceed, but it just didn't do it for the fans. And now, a nod to horror classics. What makes Scream enjoyable, other than its thriller element of course, is its quick references to other well-known horror films that are sprinkled throughout the film. When Principal Hembry opens his office door and looked out into the empty high school corridor, there sat a lonely janitor named Fred, dressed in a sweater identical to the monster of Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. In another scene, as Randy sits on the couch watching Halloween, the soundtrack weaves its way through Scream's events, another nod to the genre's predecessors. In the latter versions of Scream, Tara and Sam Carpenter are a nod to the legendary horror director John Carpenter, who directed Halloween. Apart from that, we see several references to the original Scream itself, such as Sam copying her dad Billy, or the killer using phrases such as, with pleasure, before attacking Sam. The whole series is a tribute to several classic slashers and isn't shy of flaunting it with every release. Next, the most iconic killer of all time. And how can we forget Ghostface, one of the most iconic and recognized killers of all time. The best thing about him is that you don't know who he is until the very end, which adds a sense of mystery and suspense that keeps the audience guessing, terrified on the edge of their seats. Throughout the series, you see him reappear. He's a legend, a myth that every psycho teen wants to recreate in different places with different motives. The only thing that remains constant is that mask. But he's not all blood and gore like your typical slasher either. He's clearly just a regular guy. He trips often, fumbles with his knife, gets kicked around, and is reluctant to burst through closed doors to get to the victim quickly. He could be anyone, and that's what's so genius about him. He's a more violent and a more realistic version of a Scooby-Doo villain. So while many are terrified of him, they're also kind of not. Not to mention that infamous knife swipe right before he struck. Literally no words. The action itself was enough to send shivers down your spine. Now for the shocking reveals. And of course the final reveal and twist adds to the whole thrill. You can see it coming, and then you don't. Then it doesn't make much sense. But then 
it happens. You saw it all along. The twist at the end of Scream is nothing short of amazing, as it foreshadows throughout the film. Plus, it doesn't ruin the film after you watch it the first time. Knowing the ending actually makes it all the more better. In Scream 1, it was Billy, and well, he was kind of sus, but not enough to be the killer himself. Then it was Mickey, and then in Scream 3, we get to find out that it was Roman who was the mastermind throughout. Next, reimagine female protagonist. More than any of these factors, though, Scream's biggest contribution to popular culture's view of the horror genre is its makeover of the female protagonist. Sydney Prescott from Scream 1, unlike Halloween's Scream Queen, is a woman with agency who doesn't rely on misogynistic biases for empathy. She's anything but a damsel in distress waiting for a man to come save her, or a timid hottie who gets sexualized throughout the film. Instead, she's aware of her own culture and the resources at her disposal, and makes full use of them to beat Ghostface. She's probably one of the most empowered female characters in the history of slashers. And then in the sequels, we see her shaping her identity on the basis of her unsettling past, which makes her character all the more realistic and relatable. The movie has a number of strong female characters apart from Sydney herself. We see the badass journalist Gail Weathers make it out alive in all of the five Scream installments. And just recently, we saw Tara Carpenter and Sam Carpenter, who's the newest protagonist of the Scream franchise, also make an appearance in the Sydney Prescott fashion. And it's not just the protagonists who are women. In Scream 4 and 5, we saw Jill Roberts and Amber Freeman play Ghostface respectively, and did a pretty stellar job at scaring the daylights out of us. Come to think of it, how many other slasher thrillers have experimented with female antagonists before Scream? Honestly, not many. And finally, a never-seen-before dark comedy. Among the best things about Scream, though, is that it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's not trying very hard to impress the audience, either. It's somewhat of a dark comedy, filled with humor and fantastic irony, giving you just as many laughs as it does screams. Despite all the jump scares, the violent twist ending, and the intense blood and gore on screen, it still manages to be comedic, and that's what keeps people coming back for more. It's a favorite for many because you go in expecting terror and a whole lot of violence, but you're always pleasantly surprised by the level of wit that Wes Craven weaves into the movie. It brilliantly revived the dying horror genre in the 90s and set a new bar for scary movies to come. And with its success, Scream spawned a whole slew of imitators almost immediately. Suddenly, nearly every horror film had a tongue-in-cheek tone to it, as if it were knowingly winking at the audience without flat-out breaking the fourth wall. Bringing in young, sarcastic newcomers was the new norm, and many actors, including Jennifer Love Hewitt, got their breaks from these imitators. Now, with the sixth film already generating positive buzz ahead of its release, the franchise shows that it still has plenty of steam. Scream has one of the most dedicated fan bases in the horror genre, proving that it has become as iconic as the films that inspired it. And that's a wrap for this video. What was your favorite Scream movie? Why do you think this series is so iconic? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. See you in the next one.